And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we are going to be constructing apartment buildings and filling them with great tenants like loud musicians and crazy odd people and computer hackers and all sorts of crazy stuff. We're also going to be demolishing our opponent's buildings and putting squatters in their buildings and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. We're looking at Freese's Landlords from 2F Spiel. Uh, I believe this just got sort of reprinted and redone for uh, the, the Spiel uh, Essen Fair back in uh, 2013. It plays uh, two to six players. It is uh, 12 and ages up and 40 minutes it plays. It's a card game. Let's take it out, show you what I think. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, Freeze's Landlord, you're trying to build as many apartments as you can, stuff them with tenants, hope that your opponent doesn't mess with them, and you're going to get a lot of income every round. So at the beginning of the game here, we've got a uh, stack of apartment type of draw deck. This is where if, this is the card you'll get if you go to jail. Here's some monsters that come up later in the game, and we have some roofs, and this is sort of the, the, how the game gets set up in the middle. We also get five cards and $3 to start the game. Uh, the money here is uh, very chintzy little plastic stuff. Uh, they do have numbers on them. They're different colors. Uh, they are pretty cheap, but I guess it's better than nothing. And we start the game with five cards. So here's my five cards to start off with. They all have the apartment on the, on the back of them. And on the back, there's three different types of cards that you can see in the game. Uh, some of them are called tenants. And here we see uh, the hacker. And we see him, he's kind of sitting in this way. And how the apartments, uh, how these tenant cards work, is this person, if he's in an apartment, he's going to get you $2 every turn. And he can be in a building up to five times tall uh, and he prefers to be with other hackers of course hackers with other hackers they each get you one extra income because they all network together and things like that every every one of these guys um, has a sort of a special ability as well here's another tenant this is a tavern and they get you five dollars which is a lot of income but they can only be on a uh, in a building that's three floors or less and they really like to be on the bottom floors. They can't be on a top floor because the tavern's usually on the bottom floor like usual. And there's no wealthy tenants, which essentially means nobody over an income of two can be above it. Because, of course, no rich people want to live above in a tavern. So that thematically fits. So that's sort of a, a, an idea of a, of a tenant. Also, maybe in the last tenant I'll show you here is squatters because these are sort of a special one where uh, they give no rent and they can be in any building five or lower. Now, the thing here is no rent's paid in the building. This is a card that you would play on somebody else's apartment in an empty spot so once squatters are there nobody gets rent from there we'll show you a little bit more about that later the other types of cards is expansions there's rooftop expansions and there's basement expansions this is a stairs coming down to a basement and essentially it's a basement expansion and we you could put this card at the bottom to kind of expand one of your apartments and then there's all sorts of action type cards that are in the game this one of course is called murder as they're burying somebody there interesting artwork uh, so in a murder you would bury any tenant below basically you could bury your opponent's tenants. So there's a lot of take that uh, playing at your opponent in this game and building your own apartment. So on your turn, you can play as many cards as you want. So, and you can either play them as an apartment card or as the action cards say, or as the tenant cards say. So let's take a look at this. Okay, I already showed that I have two tenants that I could put in an apartment somewhere, and the tavern has to be in the bottom. This guy doesn't make more than two, just like the tavern says, so this is already a good combination. Now these cards here, uh, some of these are really good. I might not want to get rid of them, but I might want to build my apartment at the same time. So I would flip this one over and maybe even the basement expansion to start with. And what I would do is I would put these two out just like that. It's two floors and you have to complete a new house on the same turn. And you put the roof, you grab a roof and you put it right on there. And then I have a two floor apartment. Now, uh, this costs me nothing, but in the future, anytime I build an apartment, it's however many apartments there were before I built this one that's how much it would cost so this is free but when i build the second one it's going to be worth it's going to be cost one to build the building the next one will be two to build the building three to build the building so as you go each building will cost one more coin to build but the first one's free so i can easily just place the tenant down here uh because he can only be on the bottom and there's the hacker and then i would end my turn and i would get some income in this case i'm going to get seven income so i would take a five i'd take a two and from this $7, I can either take it or 
I can try to reinvest it and get some more cards. Now, the first, I can only use this money. I can't use any other money I have in my pot. Just the money I earned that turn, up to $7, I can buy new cards. The first five cards are only a dollar. Every card after that's $2, and I can look at them one at a time. So I go, yeah, I want a card. I'll look at it. Ooh, a roof expansion. Good. And I would put this down. Now, keep in mind, all the cards are kept secret, too, from your, from your buddies. So I just put one of those down. I'm going to get another card. Ooh, a family. These guys actually have to be put face up like this. Ooh, I'll get those. That's another one. Uh, let's get this. Another family. So we would be drawing cards and paying a dollar until we want to stop. And the first five are uh, one dollar. And then that would end my turn. So let's pretend it's back to my turn again. Uh, I'm going to build another apartment here. Maybe I go like that. And I put a roof on this one. And again, this one would now be one coin because that's how many houses I had built previous. So I had to pay a coin to the bank. And I'm going to put in the group house. Now, some of these tenants, as you can see, go straight up and down because the group home or the group house takes two floors up. They're immune to murder, which means that nobody in the group house can get murdered. It's one of the action cards that you can do to mess with your opponents. And in this case, they, they can, can't be in a building higher than three and uh, they would get four income. So at the end of this turn, let's say I was done, I would get four, five, six, and eleven dollars and i would get eleven bucks and i can again choose to draw cards and pay a dollar up to five cards again and that's pretty much how our turn works i'm going to show you some different interesting tenants that come in the game the nobles can only be in one one floor or less but they take up two floors so you essentially need a one floor and a basement they're very particular but they pay a heck of a lot of money they're they're simply rich they pay the most interesting little guys the musicians are interesting because they can uh they make old tenants relocate so if you put you can actually put any of these guys in other people's buildings as well so if somebody had a good tenant you could put a musician in their building to get rid of their very good tenant now musicians can actually be in apartments with other musicians and if people are there first um you know, they get kicked out. If they come afterwards, well, they already knew musicians lived there and they could live there. Pretty interesting little thing there with musicians. Uh, we've got, you know, a guy and a dog who always wants to live on the bottom floor because, hey, he's old and he doesn't want to climb stairs. Pretty interesting. And these odd ones, which uh, they can only live with other odd ones, which is very interesting. Only odd ones in one there. So those are some interesting tenants. Let's look at some action cards. These are typically played with to defend yourself or mess with somebody else. In the game, if you're being attacked by somebody's card, you, it's the only time in the game that you can play outside of your turn. Essentially, if someone's trying to attack you, you can play something to defend yourself. Look at this, rent, rent uh, withheld. You can throw this and place on anybody else's tenant and then they don't get rent this next turn. Kind of screws them over that way. Move, you can move any tenant to any empty apartment. So you can take a good tenant from somebody else, make them move into one of your places, or conversely, if you have one of these squatters in your apartment, which is very bad, because at the beginning of your turn, the best tenant that's in a building with squatters moves out because they don't want to live there. And nobody in that building gets rent. So the squatters sort of sit in a building and they pretty much eventually will vacate that whole building. It will just sit there. So moving, sometimes you can use these to get the squatters out of there. Or you can get a good guy from somebody else. Murder. You can bury a tenant below the, the discard pile. So if they have a good tenant, boom, you can murder them out and get them out of there. Um, you could destroy someone's building with a bomb by, you know, playing this. But if you do that, somebody might play a police card to kind of uh, get you and arrest you and put you in jail. Which if you're in jail, you have to pay five bucks to get out or else you get no rent that round. Uh, but someone plays a police card on you, you could also have an alibi and get get away from having the police there. So there's all this take that, and there's some defense, there's some back and forth, there's some this cancels, that cancels, that type of effects that go on uh, with the action cards. And it continues like that all the way around to this entire deck uh, is done. Once this deck is done, the game's over. You'll probably have, depending on the players, anywhere from three to ten houses maybe, depending on how many players you've got there. And uh, then you count up all your money, and the one with the most money wins. All right, well, there you have it. Freesis Landlords. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of chaotic. It's kind of nuts. Uh, it's kind of fun. <laughs> it is interesting. The artwork on the cards are really good. I really like that. Um, it's sort of an interesting game where it is sort of a, a take that mean game. You are going to be messing with your opponents quite a bit. Uh, so if you don't like, you know, that meanness part of the game, you probably won't like this game. But if you don't mind messing with your buddies and have not taking this too seriously, it's something that you might be able to have some fun with. Now the rules state that uh, you don't play, the first couple times you don't play with the special abilities of each of those, those uh, uh, tenants. 
And of course, I never read, I never stay by those types of rules. I, I we play it the same all the way through. I will advise you not to do that because it will make your head explode because there are a million little rules when you think about all the different actions. And this one does this one to this one, but not this to that one. And this one combats this one. And this one you can defend this one. And oh, you can't murder if the family's in the house. You know, there's like all these things you got to keep track of, which will make your brain melt if you're not used to like just playing with it normally. Uh, so. It's a good thing that there's a lot of different strategies you can take, but at the same time, there's a lot of stuff to keep track of, um, which is usually a little bit more than I like to. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on. And as you play the game more, you'll become more familiar with it. Um, don't expect to really understand everything the first time you play the game. Um, I mean, it was fun. It was good to play around. I like it with less people because the pacing moves faster. Um, and it's even good with two players. I play with two and it's really good. So there you have it. It's an interesting game. It's, it's, it's okay. It's not great. I'm not going to pull it out every day. It's not my favorite card game in the world, but it's not a bad game either. There's just a lot of moving parts. If you like a lot of those details to keep track of, to play things and have a decent amount of strategy and a rather really quick game. Now, a quick game, I might say. 40 minutes is the box. Um, it didn't matter when we played this. It, my one, one of my complaints with the game, of course, is the, the crappy poker chips, but again, better than nothing. But the, it always felt like that deck just felt too long to get to. Like I felt like the game was ready to be over well before the deck for the level of complexity that the game is. Uh, so it overstays its welcome a bit. Uh, it is quite crazy with the randomness and a lot of rules to keep, and that was a downside. Uh, but if you can get past that and you can play it enough times where you're not doing those things and you're playing it often enough that you don't have to keep going back to the rule book and looking at all these little fine rules, it's something you might enjoy. Otherwise, if you don't like all those fine rules, you probably won't. But either way, it's an interesting game. You might want to check out Freesa's Landlord. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>